What's up, guys? This is Blake, host of the That You May Know Him podcast, and welcome back to Two for Ten, the show where we study the Bible one book at a time, one verse at a time. Hey, remember all the way back on episode one of Two for Ten when we told you that one of the main themes of the book of Revelation is the Lord teaching his church how to remain faithful to him even amid times of suffering and persecution? Well, guess what? On today's episode of 2 for 10, Jesus is going to give the church at Smyrna his game plan for how to stay faithful during times of tribulation. That's what's coming up today on 2 for 10. So let's get it going. All right, guys, today we're going to be in Revelation chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. These are the last words that Jesus will speak directly to the church at Smyrna. And Revelation chapter 2, verses 10 and 11 go like this. Remember, this is Jesus himself speaking directly to the church at Smyrna. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have tribulation. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers will not be hurt by the second death. That was Revelation chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. What do we make of this? Well, guys, we have reached the point in the book of Revelation where Jesus actually tells one of his churches and the members therein to stay faithful unto death. That's right. We've reached the point in the book of Revelation where Jesus tells one of his churches to stay faithful unto death. In fact, he doesn't just tell them. He doesn't just encourage them to stay faithful. In the Greek language, this is a command. This is what they call the imperative tense in Greek. It's actually used twice in verse 10. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. That is in the imperative tense. That means Jesus is commanding them. Do not be afraid what you're about to suffer. And the second time the imperative tense is used is right here when he says, be faithful unto death. It's a commandment, and I will give you the crown of life. Look, guys, for many Christians, this is a really hard thing for them to wrap their minds around. Some people are listening to this and thinking to themselves, yeah, I totally get that sometimes in this life we are called to suffer and to endure persecution and hardship for our faith in Jesus. Totally get it. Other people are hearing this, and they're going, Say, what? God wants us to actually suffer? He's actually, Jesus is actually telling his church, you're going to endure tribulation, some of you unto death, but stay faithful? The idea that Jesus would actually allow or even want members of his church to suffer tribulation is something that for many Christians is foreign. They don't get it. They've never heard it. They've been told, maybe, perhaps, that since God is a loving father and since he's good and since he's trustworthy and since he's faithful, that means he would never want his children to suffer in this life. Well, guess what? That's actually not the story that the Bible paints. That's not the story that the Bible tells. It's not the picture that the Bible paints. You see, all through the New Testament, the kingdom of God is seen as having arrived but not fully arrived. We are redeemed through the blood of Jesus, but as Paul says, we have not yet achieved our full redemption. Jesus Christ has done an incredible work on our behalf, but it has not yet been fully realized. What am I saying exactly? What I'm saying is this. One day, God will completely annihilate 
and destroy and bring to an end every bit of pain and suffering and tribulation and hardship that we endure in this life. But that time is not yet. It's coming in the future, but it hasn't fully arrived yet. The story that the Bible tells from beginning to end, especially for the New Testament Christians, for the believers in Messiah, is that because God is so faithful and so trustworthy and so good, we do not have to fear enduring hardship for his name because we know what the end result is. How can Jesus say to the church at Smyrna, how can the risen Christ who paid for their redemption say to them, be faithful even unto death? It's because he knows that when they are, he will give them the crown of life. My friends, this is the story that the entire Bible tells from beginning to end. Remember the Old Testament book of Job? Of course you remember the Old Testament book of Job. Job is one of those few places in the Bible where we're given a glimpse. We're sort of taken behind the curtain of the heavenly realm. What is it like in heaven where God sits on a throne and these other powerful beings that have some say in what happens on the earth are coming to and fro, presenting themselves before him, telling him what they're doing, reporting back to him, and even we see Satan himself accusing God of something. Did you catch that? You see, many Christians understand that Satan is the accuser of the brethren, of believers, of those who belong to God. He accuses us night and day before God of being guilty of sin. And thankfully, the blood of Jesus Christ now speaks a louder word. But did you also know that Satan accuses God day and night? What does he accuse God of? According to the book of Job, Satan accuses God of creating a world full of completely selfish and self-centered people. Nobody, according to Satan, loves God for who he is. We only love him for the good things that he gives to us, for the hedges of protection that he places around us, and for the blessings that he pours down on us. What we see in that book is that God is looking for people who will testify, not just with their words, but with their actions, that they love God more than they love his blessings, more than they love themselves. And my friends, we see this fully realized in the faithful New Testament church. And right here, where Jesus tells one of his churches to stay faithful, to stay faithful, to testify with their lives that he is of more value to them than even their very breath, than even their very temporary, temporal life here on earth, that they actually trust him enough to stay faithful knowing that their reward, their crown of life is waiting for them on the other side. Just in case you're unaware, and as I've said, this theme is all through the Bible, especially in the New Testament. Let me read you a few other verses that talk about this very thing. These are just a few select New Testament passages now. Philippians 1, 29 and 30, Paul writes to the church at Philippi, For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, Paul writing to the church at Corinth. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen but to the things that are unseen let me read you one more from second peter chapter 4 verse 1 it says since therefore christ suffered in the flesh arm yourselves with the same way of thinking for whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin did you catch that it actually says that suffering in the flesh in this 
temporal flesh that we live in is one of the ways that God uses, one of the mechanisms that God uses to help us overcome sin. All right, here's the real question that we have now before us in light of this passage. How do we prepare to stay faithful to Jesus when suffering comes? And I got news for you. There's a two-fold answer to that question. And both answers are right here in the text. The first thing that Jesus says to the church at Smyrna is do not be afraid. That was in Revelation 2.10. Do not fear. Do not be afraid what you are about to suffer. Not being afraid of suffering is a huge thing. And preparing your mind to not be afraid is a very, very big deal. Again, that wasn't a suggestion by Jesus. That was a command. Don't be afraid what you're going to suffer. Next, he says, Behold, the devil's about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for 10 days you'll have tribulation. Be faithful unto death. What is Jesus saying? Why is Jesus telling the church at Smyrna that this is going to happen? It's coming. It's heading your direction because he wants them to be prepared. And my friends, the second key for being prepared to stay faithful to Jesus in the midst of suffering and persecution, the second way that you prepare yourself to stay faithful is by starting right now before suffering and tribulation have arrived at your doorstep. Are you spending time with the Lord today? Are you spending time in his word today? Are you learning these truths that the Bible teaches that we, the faithful people of God, might one day be called on to showcase our faithfulness? Are you storing this word up in your heart and preparing your mind? Are you communing with God in such a way that you have come to realize that your fellowship with him is worth more than all the temporal blessings this life has to offer. Your relationship with him is worth more than your relationship with anybody else, including maybe even your spouse, your parents, your kids, your best friend. My friends, in order to be prepared when suffering comes, you have to begin now. You begin by preparing yourself to not be afraid. Truly, we Christians have learned to fear the Lord and nothing else. But also, you prepare now by developing, by growing in, by pursuing your relationship with God and your growth as a disciple of Jesus Christ. By spending time seeking His face every day, by spending time in prayer, and by spending time in this book. Hopefully, you realize that when you read this book, you're not just reading any old book. You're actually being given an opportunity to commune with the God who's behind every single word of it. Last thing I'll say, if you prepare yourself now to not be afraid, and if you prepare yourself now by growing in your relationship with God and by seeking him, by living a faithful life day in and day out, when the time comes, you will be ready. And when the time comes, your natural reaction, your gut instinct will be to depend completely on him because truly he is the one who is able to hold on to us, to keep us faithful as we endeavor to stay faithful to him and to hold on to him. My friends, that is all the time that we have for today. That was Revelation chapter 2 verses 10 and 11 where Jesus equips the church at Smyrna to stay faithful to him even unto death. How important is this to Jesus? It's so important that he tells them, if you do this, if you stay faithful, I will give you the crown of life. We know that this applies not just to the Smyrnans, but to all of us. Because the next thing Jesus says is, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. My friends, that's all the time we have for today. I'll be back tomorrow on our Wednesday podcast. I'll be back Thursday for another episode of 2 for 10. We will be in Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. We'll be introduced to the church at Pergamum. Until next time, stay blessed, live loved. I'm Blake Barbera signing off, and thank you so much for watching and listening to That You May Know Him. Oh, 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 o